Hi, welcome back and hello to new viewers. I'm Laura Bailey. I'm a senior lecturer in English Language and Linguistics at the University of Kent. I'm making this series of videos about getting ready to come and study with us. I'll tell you a little bit about what I'm doing and I'll give you one of my top tips. You can see my previous videos in my channel and of course you can like and subscribe. This week I've been doing a bit of planning. It's summer right now and we don't have any teaching and there aren't as many meetings to go to as there are during term time. That sounds like it's a restful time, but it's actually really busy. <laughs> um, there are two things that summer is for, for me, apart from enjoying the warm weather. One of them is research. Research is a vital part of the job, um, but it can sometimes get a little bit squeezed out during the rush of term. So I always make sure that I spend some time during the summer doing some quality work on my own ongoing research projects. So the other thing is planning for next year, and that's what today is for. I need to update all of my teaching materials and my reading lists for next year, and I also need to write a new module that I'm teaching for the first time. And I also need to make welcome week plans for activities for all of our new students. So there's loads to do, but the deadline for it all is months away. And that means I need lists and schedules to stop it from feeling overwhelming. So I tend to make a list of each of the smaller items for each big item. And then I schedule in some time each week for each one, rather than trying to do one whole large task before I move on to the next big task. That helps me to stay on track and not run out of time and also not feel like any one task is too monstrous. This is actually also the approach that I would recommend for students. When you start your course, you'll get your timetable in the first week and it will be pretty sparse. Maybe only eight hours a week or less of timetable classes. They'll be spread throughout the week, so you might have one day where you have two or three things and then um, other days just one or nothing at all. And your first deadline will probably be a month or more in the future. This can be a really weird feeling. Uh, no matter whether you come from a more full sixth form timetable or a job where tasks typically have to be done on a much shorter time scale and either way you probably had a teacher or a manager looking over your shoulder to make sure that you did it and not having that can leave people feeling a bit like they aren't sure what they're supposed to be doing so this is why i always suggest that new students make a timetable for themselves straight away i'll probably do a longer video about this sometime um, so today I'm just going to focus on a couple of things. One is the question of what you're meant to fill your days with. You'll quickly find there's plenty, including part-time work, social activities, sport, maybe caring responsibilities. Um, you should also schedule in specific time slots for doing your weekly reading and your seminar preparation and for getting started on assignments so that you don't end up putting it off or forgetting about it. But you should also find time to make the most of all the other things. So depending on what you want to do, you could schedule in a workshop on critical thinking or essay writing. You could attend a lecture on genetics or sociology or wildflowers. You might also want to schedule in a meeting with your lecturer to talk about your ideas for an assignment. If you look for these opportunities, you'll find you get the most from your time at Kent, but you do need to schedule them in. Otherwise, it's easy to forget about them and just start to focus on only the things that you're actually required to do. I also wanted to talk about commuting. You might be living on campus, in which case getting to your classes won't be an issue. But if you do decide to live a little bit further away, there might be days when the thought of traveling, say, 45 minutes each way for a one hour seminar feels like a lot. So this is where planning your week really comes into its own. If you also schedule in lunch with a friend, a meeting with your lecturer and a two hour library session to do next week's reading, well, then that travel time starts to look a lot more reasonable. So just spending a little bit of time at the start of each week planning out uh, what you want to do in your activities can really make a big difference to your productivity. Whatever your own circumstances, I do recommend using a paper planner. So your timetable will be online and you probably use an online calendar, or if you don't, you should. Um, but I find that having a paper diary, here's mine, um, it, it really helps me to stay on track and to see all my deadlines at a glance. Um, I'll talk about this in a longer video sometime, and I will show you how I use my diary. Um, but for now, just take my tip and think about getting yourself an academic year planner, either a wall planner or a book, whatever works for you, um, to stay organized. So that's my tip for this week. 
If you want to find me on Twitter, I'm Linguist Laura. I also have a blog about language, linguistlaura.blogspot.com. You can find our department at Kent E L L Y on Twitter and Instagram, and we have a Facebook page. And of course, you can go to kent.ac.uk for lots more information about studying at Kent and about our department. Don't forget to subscribe so that you don't miss my next video.